Welcome to Insert Art. Insert catchphrase here. I'm Kat. I'm Ariel. Today we are doing a traditional watercolor versus digital watercolor challenge. Today's video is sponsored by Huya. We're using on our Huyans Adobe Fresco for our digital component, and I'm starting here with some traditional watercolors. The plan is try and do something traditionally, and I have never used Fresco before. Have you? No. Okay. Yeah. So I we'll be existed. figuring out on the go. I yeah. knew the name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know the name. <laughs> You're going to give it a go and uh, give yep. me some pointers halfway through. And we're going to try and recreate what we make in the opposite medium. Jazza was telling us in Fresco, it's got like a live component to it, so it's supposed mm. to mimic traditional... They're, they're called physics-based fluid brushes. I don't know, something like that. Physics-based! So that your live brushes replicate the dynamics of actual watercolor on paper. I'm glad you're doing that first because I'm just going to ask you what to do when I get to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started. Honestly, I was feeling out of my depth with both Fresco and the watercolor. Like I'm used to Photoshop, I'm used to Procreate. When I did Fresco at first, it was just this really weird no man's land because I was trying to think and remember what it was like to do watercolor but at the same time having the advantages of digital like thought all right I'm just going to go with simple subject matter which is a portrait and of course watercolor always inspires flowers so I put a flower in her hair and then realized I don't know how to draw flowers so it just made things way harder for myself. That being said by the end of that experiment look I would have loved to polish it a lot more but I think I got enough of a feel of uh, fresco that I, I would actually download that program. I, I would play with that a lot more. Uh, it was very satisfying how a lot of the texture generations is kind of random. You sort of splodge something down and it takes a life of its own in, in a really great way. Traditional is way more my comfort zone. I was more than happy to just jump straight in, start with lots of sort of like fun texture things. My favorite thing to do with uh, paints and watercolors specifically. So I wet the whole page, all the sort of like wet on wet, drop the color, have fun watching it sort of spread out across the page. I find that really fun to do for very blurry sort of like backgrounds that are way back in the image. And then I sort of started adding on defined shapes for flowers and various things. And I wasn't really sure where I was going with it. Uh, initially I was like, Maybe I'll just draw flowers, but then I decided that was a little bit too boring. So I added a mouse riding a rhinoceros beetle, as you do. I had a lot of fun with sort of trying to add like a little bit of texture here and there for him and his beetle friend. I made sure that I made that a lot more detailed and sharp in comparison, so you sort of bring them forward from the background. I felt like it needed just the outlines just to really cement that it was like a finished piece. And then I sort of got stuck realizing that I had to recreate that all digitally. Um, <laughs> At which point I was mildly terrified. So we are now swapping mediums, but first... Insert sponsor. So who are you on are so ahead of the game that they've actually just launched a hologram display. This revolutionary device has 8K resolution, P3 color gamma, 10-bit color depth, 120 hertz refresh rate, 1200 nits brightness, and 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. It's apparently a hologram display projected by the pen holder. It's designed for portability and it's got Pentec X. What you see is what you get. So like I'm imagining like, you know, on like Star Trek where they have like the... Oh yeah, You totally. can like swipe to the next computer. Oh, I would love to bring that out to like plein air studies. Ooh. Like you bring their little hologram device out and then you get kind of... Oh, it's almost like augmented reality. It's just, I, I don't mind blowing. I don't even know what to expect. I'm really excited to see. And uh, if you want to go check it out yourself as well, just jump on their website. If holograms feel like technology is just progressing a bit too fast, Huion does have a spectacular range of more traditional digital tablets. Such as their all-in-one computers, their Canvas Studio 24 and their Canvas Studio 16. The Canvas Studio range is their flagship Canvas range, but it has a computer now built in, so you can just take it wherever you need to go with you. It runs with an i7 processor, a GTX 1650. It has 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. It comes with Windows 11 Professional, and it's designed to go with you wherever you need to be. Thank you to Hyun for sponsoring this video. They have an incredible range of tablets the um, display tablets, now the all-in-one, and upcoming the hologram tablet. Go check all of that out. Links are below in the description. 
Thank you so much, Huion, for sponsoring us today. So I brought some of my brushes from home. I was going to tell Aria what they do because you haven't really used a lot of watercolor It's brushes. been years. <laughs> yeah. So this is just your normal round brush. Mm -hmm. This is called a needle nose brush. You can see there it's really thin on the end. It's a bit like a rigger brush, which you use for doing lines. Um, this is a mop brush, so if you want to sort of like big textury, washy type yeah. things with that one. And this is a very long watercolour brush. This is like a what they would call a French watercolour. Similar to the needle nose, um, but you're getting thicker lines and you can sort of go thick to thin to thick to thin a lot easier with yep. that one. And what's the best for like splatter effects? I use the mop brush mm -hmm. and either use your hand to hit with, mm -hmm. or if you've got another brush, you can go. Okay. Yeah. And what are the benefits to wetting the paper beforehand or not? You can get where it sort of spreads out and sort of mixes together. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then it's going to stay in sort of the shape you put it in. I have so many questions. How do I open it? <laughs> it it's, it's an interesting mishmash mm -hmm. because like I was trying to think in terms of watercolour, like you need the light colours down first and then the darks, but you still have the advantage of digital things like layers right. and eraser that can actually take things out completely. So it's a really weird headspace to be in. If I scream. <laughs> if you scream. <laughs> we are recreating what we did before. So I've got mine sitting here. I've got a photo of mine. I've got a photo of hers. Wish us luck. <laughs> Moving over to watercolour, oh man, you know like Everyone starts out with watercolour as a kid, so you assume it's a simple thing and it's just not. <laughs> it's a lot less forgiving in terms of, like if you don't plan ahead, then there's some mistakes down the track you just cannot fix. Like it's very hard to get white white uh, back after you've coloured it. Um, things are just a lot more permanent. So thankfully Kat was here to give me pointers, sometimes giving me pointers after I've made the mistake and then can't go back. <laughs> I'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that for next time. Uh, also, we were saying it's like, so on the second round, trying to replicate what you did the first time, it's like you're trying to draw from reference, except you don't have a pencil to try and get the proportions right. But also in the reference, you were kind of had no idea what you're doing in the first place. So everything was just flying by the seat of our pants today. Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that being said, it was a lot of fun. I'm I'm not the most proud of my work. It, it's not bad, it's not bad, given that it was experimental. I could just see so much more to improve on, which I would like to in the future. I would love to revisit watercolour properly and get good at it. If you had to ask me to pick right now, I'd jump straight to fresco, because that, that's obviously more of my comfort zone. But I do miss the traditional stuff, so I, I would love to get good at both. So using fresco is actually um, pretty intuitive uh, coming from a traditional background. So you sort of did have the opportunity to watch the paint seep out into the paper like you would using wet on wet traditionally. All the splatter brushes and all that sort of stuff. So that was still like super fun and I was, I felt like I was able to sort of mimic reasonably well. I did have a few issues with various brushes trying to mimic, for example, like I didn't like how the grass ended up, but I did not have the time to fiddle around with that. The sort of different colours and um, various textures on the leaves, um, I got quite involved in that. Uh, but I think it turned out okay. Uh, I really, really enjoyed um, both aspects, both mediums. I really want to try Fresco some more now that I, I see what it does. I'm really keen to play with more of the textures and traditional things that it mimics. So uh, that's it. We've tortured ourselves for the day. Um, thank you again to Huion for sponsoring this video and thank you to our Patreons for making all this possible. We're really enjoying our growing Patreon family, seeing new people on the Discord. Um, if you would like to join us on there for exclusive content as well as like live Q&A sessions, things like that, please click the link in the description and we hope to see you there. Did you guys enjoy uh, watching the digital or the traditional more? Um, what, did, what would you want to play with? I'd really like to see in the comments. Also, what bubble tea flavours were we drinking today? Oh yeah, this is going to be a thing with us. So uh, mm. you need to guess in the comments what bubble teas we were drinking today and yeah. give us some suggestions for next time. What's your favourite? And mm. we'll try it.
And uh, that's us done. So, uh, insert See you next time. outro. Insert outro. Bye. <laughs>